Peace family. My name is Vicki Dillard, and I'm so pleased to be a contributor here on the African Diaspora News channel. As you come in, please make sure that you like, that you share, and that you subscribe to this amazing channel and network. Family, I have an interesting topic today. Uh, surely some of you all have heard recently that some of the family members of the slain, such as Tamir Rice's mother, Miss Samaria Rice, have publicly criticized and condemned folks like Black Lives Matter, attorney Benjamin Crump, Tamika Mallory, and a few others of what they believe clout chasing and capitalizing off of Black death. Um, I believe that Miss Samaria Rice, Tamir Rice's mother, of course, it's a 12-year-old boy who was murdered in a matter of seconds by a white supremacist race soldier. She said that um, she was, she really came out like right after she saw Tamika's appearance on the Grammys. I think someone else said that Tamika did an appearance on Love and Hip Hop. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. But neither here nor there. Um, and some folks feel that some of the complaints, some of the criticism of some of the family members are legitimate. I have used this opportunity to highlight some other issues because I believe that there's more than one thing that's going on with this. I believe that some of the suspicion and some of the criticism that black activists and black civil rights attorneys are getting some of them that purport to be the face and spokespersons for black people. I truly believe the reason why some of them are receiving so much criticism is not just because of being an ambulance chaser or clout chaser, as some have said, I believe it first has to do with it's their disconnection to the true black grassroots family. When we see that you're willing to connect and collaborate with white supremacist celebrity entities that have slandered your name, for example, like Tamika, she was slandered and dogged out by Meghan McCain, and then she ended up making an appearance on The View as Meghan McCain confronted her. Um, when you are willing to meet with the white supremacist liar who slanders your name, and you refuse to even meet with certain elements um, of black society that are considered to be the black grassroots, that's people will automatically feel a disconnect and have a suspicion um, about you. I believe that it may not be appropriate for me to comment on every criticism that some of the families have made about uh, Tamika and Attorney Crump and others. There are some comments that I have made about some of the family members criticism that I think is interesting. And I think it requires more from these people, organizations and law firms uh, that the families deserve more from them, um, not only financially, but in terms of their time and having a better understanding, um, especially when you're high profile. Of course, in the Tamir Rice case, Miss Rice, Miss Samaria Rice said that she personally hasn't met Tamika, but she still believes that she has been able to capitalize off of her son's death um, anyway. Uh, but the point that I want you to, I want you to look, first of all, Listen to a little bit of this commercial. Listen. I've been an activist for 25 years of my life. I come from a very long line of strong women. They always encourage me to use every single resource to help another young woman who's on her journey. I am sure black women will lead this nation to a better place. We're taking control and we're shaping our stories. Now, in the beginning of the scene, y'all see that? Y'all hear that? In the beginning of the scene, Cadillac has Tamika coming out what it appears to be at one of the Escalades. It just looked like Tamika selling Cadillacs. Tell the truth, shame the devil. It'd be one thing if a major corporation and company like that said, okay, we want to give X amount of dollars to a black organization, black businesses, black folks for scholarships or something like that. It's a whole other thing when we see you coming up out of uh, Escalade. Then we see where there is just an emphasis on black women. You talk about you come from a long line of strong black women. They always want the black woman to be strong. Strong has to do with labor and work. When the white supremacists congratulate you, when they um, start to festoon you with all kinds of awards and compliments, it's a trick to do more work for white supremacy. That's why when you see Stacey Abrams out there, you always see her breathing hard and sweating. They put her 
on all these magazine covers that was bragging on her because they said she helped deliver the vote and other black women that assisted. It's because y'all was out there in, in Georgia sun and, and heat and, and, and humidity doing the work that the white supremacy never would do only to put another white supremacist in office. You didn't do that, Stacey Abrams, and saying that I'm going to deliver the black vote and you got to give us reparations. You just said, Zaddy, I'm happy to do it. For nothing. So when they, first of all, it's not a compliment when we always talk about coming from a strong line of black women, strong black women. Then she goes on, as you heard, to say how it's going to be black women that's going to lead this nation to a better place. Family, I am all for feminine empowerment. I just finished doing back-to-back -back series on the secret uh, money in your womb, talking about our divine, uh, uh, divine feminine energy and our capacity to produce in our unique feminine way. Beloved, that does not mean I'm diminishing and saying that we don't have need of the masculine. You know that we're in a world of white supremacy where we have been dealing with the complete undoing of a people unlike any other people in history, ever in time. Other people groups have gone through things but nobody can claim they've gone through the worst form of human treatment anybody have ever experienced for longer than anybody else. Nobody can say 466 plus years, only we can. That means that the black man is not restored. The very people that Tamika is out there saying she's representing, many of them are disproportionate black men. If the people that you out there protesting for whose head just got blowed off, blown off, who was just murdered and shot, if you know that most of them, we see a lot of black women now too, but if you know the majority of them are black men, it's clear that black men have not been repaired, made whole, and that they're not in positions of dominance. So why are we acting like it's the black woman that's going to lead the nation? I'm saying elevate the black woman without denigrating and ignoring the black man. Black men have a couple of major responsibilities as provider and protectors. I'm old school. I believe that. You're not going to ever trick me into abandoning my protection. The black woman and our children, the black family has no hope. If we're not protected, And when everybody makes these attempts to uh, uh, effeminize the black man, to make him docile, to make him distracted and interested in every other thing and intersectional project that's going on in the world other than their woman, when they don't even recognize that we're at war, that's by design. Remember, I've done shows. You've heard it before. Study that was done on those Kenyan soldiers, men and boys, talking about the ideals of masculinity. Y'all remember I talked about that. I repeatedly discussed these kinds of things. And in that study, we found that the United States government, by and through our State Department's Bureau of Counterterrorism, spent $600,000 of your very black taxpayer dollars to study Kenyan boys and soldiers, to study specifically the ones that are tough. I'm quoting your government's study modules, those that were tough, heterosexual, aggressive, unemotional, and achieving. Those are the traits that causes America to fear, and quite frankly, the world. What is America going to do with that $600,000 grant to study those African boys and so, uh, men? They're going to turn around, take the information that they get from that study and use it against our warrior class who y'all call gangbangers. That's their pernicious way to get inside information to use against our own because they never want us to manifest fully these traits. Because when you have a black man that's tough, and this is your government, you need to ask yourself, why does the government, why is the U.S. government's um, 
Bureau of Counter, uh, Dep State Department's Bureau of Counterterrorism, intimidated by heterosexual, tough, aggressive, unemotional, and achieving black men. Those aren't my qualifications. I'm quoting to you from your government. That tells you everything that you need to know. Somebody talk black to me. I, I sister Tamika has done some good stuff in the past. I'm not disrespecting that. But I remember she did an interview with TMZ before where she told TMZ that she could argue in some cases that sexism is worse than racism. Sis, didn't no black man, don't no black woman need to be saying that. Didn't no black man enslave us. Didn't no black man redline you, Jerry man, you stole your vote, set you on fire or lynched you. That white supremacist male did that. Don't take on Becky's problems that she having with her man and take it as your own when we were both dealing with oppression for dang near 500 years. Let's, let's come on now. Let's not conflate her issue. Because when you conflate our issue with hers, you start out there fighting, talking about you a feminist. Somebody talk black to me. My name is Vicki Dillard. Follow me on Instagram at Vicki X Dillard. Follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Diller. That's V I C K I. Follow me on Twitter at Dillard Vicky, my last name first. Be sure to sign up quickly for my mastermind course. Every Wednesday night, I drop a spiritual jewel. It's an amazing spiritual family that we're building. It's so exciting. It's literally a movement. You can still join today for just $1. Clubvicky.com. Club V I C K I.com. Let me see you there.